Greetings, beloved. Beloved, do you ever dislike the timing of God? <laughs> I know I do. Sometimes I think he takes too long. Sometimes I think he's too early with certain things. I'm sure you've been there where you've said, God, where are you? What is taking you so long? Sometimes we can find ourselves in situations where we tell God, or if we don't tell him, we think this to ourselves: God, I've been waiting on you for too long, and now you're going to force my hand. Since you're not doing anything, I'm going to have to do something. You know that's the wrong attitude, but you know as well as I do that you've done it and I've done it. In fact, we've all done it. When we don't let go and let God, when we don't trust the timing and the ways of God, then we often end up with less than what God intends for us. Sometimes we find ourselves in situations like Abraham where we get an Ishmael before we get our Isaac, or in some cases you just get an Ishmael and your Isaac never arrives. Beloved, as I spent some time with the Lord over this past week, the Lord told me that he wanted me to start a series entitled, Let Go and Let God. So how did I hear this? We are a teaching ministry here, a prophetic teaching ministry. So from time to time, I do like to speak about the process of hearing the voice of God. So in this particular situation, I was in my prayer closet having some alone time with the Lord. I spoke and then he spoke. So after I shared some things with the Lord about just things that I was talking about uh, previously with him and things that were going through my mind, then he spoke back to me. He spoke back to me through my inner man, through that still small voice that was like a boing. And I heard that way what he was saying. And of course, as the Lord does regularly, he confirms his word. So when you sit in the presence of the Lord, when you sit silently before him and make time for him and listen to what he's saying, he will speak because he knows that you're listening for him to speak. Sometimes, though, he'll speak about things that are not what you want to talk about or even things that you're not talking to him about, but he will speak to you. He always wants to talk to you, whether it's through his word, through his still small voice, through circumstances. God always wants to talk to you. And you are a John 10, 27 believer. You are a sheep of Jesus Christ. And therefore, hearing his voice is your birthright. All right, beloved. So... As I sat in this place with the Lord, he spoke to me and told me that he wanted me to start a series entitled, Let Go and Let God. And of course, I said, okay, God, that's a phrase that everybody knows. Some people, they just throw it around loosely. I'm guilty of throwing it around loosely myself. So what do you mean by this? And the Lord began to speak to me about what it means to let go and let God or at least what he wants me to share on this program. So today, beloved, I wanna to talk to you about what it really means. What is the first step of letting go and letting God? The first step the Lord spoke to me about was acknowledging that he is God. You can be in a situation where you know there's a God, you even serve God, but because you don't see anything happening or it's not happening fast enough for you, you think that you have to take matters into your own hands. I mentioned this previously. We all know the story of Abraham. God had gave him a promise that he would have an heir and Abraham waited and waited and waited and waited and waited some more and nothing happened. His wife, Sarai, uh, she was old, he, Abraham, was old, Sarai's womb was dead, and the natural, it seemed like there was no way possible that it could happen, but you add on top of that years and years and years of waiting and not seeing any results. Then you could be placed in a situation where like Abraham, you think, okay, well, maybe God is waiting on me, so maybe I need to give God a hand. In this particular situation, God did not need Abraham to step in to try to control the situation or to try to be God. Because like I said previously as well, when we try to control the situation, then sometimes we end up with an Ishmael and sometimes we end up with nothing at all except the opposite of what God intended for us. When we let go and let God, 
we must first acknowledge that God is God. He's El Shaddai. He's God Almighty. He's El Elyon, the Most High God. The Word of God says in the book of John, John 1, I believe, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and God was the Word. It says in the book of Revelation that God is holy, and all things were created by Him, and all things were created for Him, and there was nothing that was created that wasn't created by Him or for Him. So when we choose to let go and let God, number one, it has to be a conscious choice. We have to decide to. It doesn't just happen on its own. We have to consciously decide to let go and let God because He is God. He doesn't need our help. When He wants us to do something, He'll tell us what to do. Let's take a look at a couple verses here today, beloved. One of my favorite scriptures that I continually stand on is James 4, 7, that says, Therefore, submit to the Lord, resist the devil, and he will flee. When you let go and let God, you submit your situation to him, whether good or bad, just saying, God, I submit this to you because I know that you are the creator. I know that you are the Lord over my life. I know that you are more capable than I am of handling this situation. You are more capable than I am of having the right wisdom and the right revelation as to how to proceed in this area of what to do with this thing. So we must first acknowledge that God is almighty that he has the power, that he has the authority, that he has the ability, that he is the know-it-all. Because he does know it all. He's above your situation that you faced last year. He's above the situation that you're going through now. He's above the situation, the decisions that you'll have to make in the next year coming. He's God above all. I also love Isaiah 55 verses 8 through 9, which say this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. This is really riveting if you think about it. No matter how smart a person is, no matter how many labels of being a genius that they have on them, God's thoughts are still above their thoughts. He's still smarter. His ways are still above their ways. He still knows better. Sometimes we can think that we've come to the end of our rope. We've tried this, we've tried that. Or we've done something before, so therefore we know because we've done this before, the only way, now that the situation is repeating itself, to do it is to do it the way that we did it before because we know that this works. But sometimes that's not the right way. Sometimes you may have an answer that's A and an answer that's B, and you're saying it has to be one out of the two of these. It just it has to be. Take losing weight, for instance. There's a lot of people that believe it's all about calories in and calories out. And to some degree, that's true. But there's so many other things that go into that. And for different people, it's different. It could be a hormonal issue that you're facing. It could be a stress issue, a problem with your adrenal glands. There could be an underlying issue with some other things going on there that need to be addressed. Some things that are preventing you. Even though you've tried the plan A, you've tried the plan B, which science says must work all the time. It's not working for you because you're different. You're an individual. Your body's different. Your body's different at different times. So in situations like that would be where we seek the Lord. Actually, we should be seeking him in all situations to find out what is his thought and what is his way concerning a thing. But it starts by deciding to let go of that thing and letting God come in on the scene, submitting it to God. In another example, we see in the New Testament where there was a woman who was caught in adultery and the Pharisees took the woman before Jesus and said, this woman has been caught in adultery. The law of Moses says that you should stone her. We should stone her. What do you say? What did Jesus do? 
He didn't immediately respond. The word says that he stooped down and he took his finger and he started writing something in the dirt or the sand. I believe the Lord Jesus at that time was asking God, what do you say about this, Lord? I'm going to let go. They're already telling me what should happen. They're already telling me that the law of Moses says this. They're already telling me that this is what's happened. But what do you say, God? I'm going to let go of what the law says. I'm going to let go of my feelings towards this woman who's been caught in adultery right now. I'm going to let go of my biases. I'm going to let go of my own opinion. And I'm going to let you, God, tell me what to do. And God brilliantly applied this verse in Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. He brilliantly came up with the ways and the words that were higher than their thoughts and higher than their ways. He spoke it to Jesus and Jesus said, Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. So they had this option here. This is what the book of Moses says. This is what the law of Moses says. But here's what we think you're going to do because you're so goody-goody. Because they were trying to trap him in this situation. So they've got a plan A and a plan B. But the knowledge of God says, how about this, a plan C? That's what happens when we let go and let God. There's another scripture here I like. It's Proverbs 23, 26. It says this, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. This ties back into Isaiah 55 because it's, it's saying, just give me your heart. When you give someone your heart, it means that you, you trust them. You're allowing them to come into your sphere of influence and influence you. Sometimes the things that God wants us to do are contrary to what we think we should do. Sometimes the things that God tells us to do are not things that we want to do or enjoy doing. You may be in a situation where you need finances. You may have been laid off from your job. You may have been fired from your job and you need finances. And you're thinking that the best way is to go back and do A, B, C, and D, or the best way is to go out and do this. Or you're thinking that this person's going to give you money. You're thinking that that person's going to fund an adventure um, that you want to go on. Oftentimes, God doesn't answer in the way that you're expecting. Oftentimes, God will show you that his ways are higher than your ways. His, way, his thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And I think that's for two reasons. Number one, because God is sovereign. He just is. And also, number two, it goes back to what he's saying here, Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, that his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So we must let go and let God. I was recently listening to an old message from Lester Summerall where he talked about faith and he explained that faith is really believing. And we know and I believe the book of Hebrews, it says that it is impossible, impossible to please God without faith. In order to let go and let God, you must have faith. Faith in God that he exists. Faith in God that he has the power, that he has the knowledge, that he doesn't need your help to come up with a solution. Faith just knowing that he is the creator. He is the sustainer. Faith knowing that because Jesus was here as a man, because he walked the earth and encountered the same situations that we did or have or currently are in, he has an understanding. The word of God says that we don't have a high priest who can't understand what we're going through. Your faith must be in that, that Jesus understands the situation. And that God has the power to help you. Now when we let go and let God, it doesn't mean that we don't do anything. It doesn't mean that we just lay down and play dead. It means that we have that faith to believe that God is. We have that faith to believe that God can do and will do. And that we apply James 4, 7. We submit the situation to the Lord. We resist the devil and the devil flees. So we go to God 
trusting and knowing that he can and will help us. And then we listen to hear what he tells us to do next. And we don't go back and take it up from God. Sometimes we can go through the process really well, myself included, at submitting something to God, handing it over. God, this and this is going on. Here you go. I'm giving it to you, God. This fills you. I'm giving it to you, God. I need this. I'm giving it to you, God. Here's my request. I'm giving it to you, God. And we get really good at quoting scripture. Your word says, if two shall touch and agree concerning anything, it shall be done for them. Your word says, if I will ask anything in the name of Jesus, uh, it will, and uh, do not doubt that it will be done for us. We'd love to apply that Mark 11, 22 through 24. But then when we don't see anything happening or when we just happen to think about it, we go back and we take it up. Well, let me try this or let me scroll and look up and see what these people did. Or let me call this person. Or you've already had someone to pray with you. You've come in prayer of agreement. You've prayed the prayer of faith and agreement. And now you're going to call 16 other people to have them pray the same thing for and with you even though you've already come into that prayer of agreement with that one person, you've already prayed that prayer of, prayer of faith, you've already submitted it to God. I want to encourage you today, beloved, submit it to God, whatever it is, and leave it there. Do not go back and take it up. Believe that God exists. Believe that God is El Elyon, the Most High God, that He is El Shaddai, the God Almighty, that he's Jehovah Gabor, the warrior, that he's Jehovah Rapha, our healer, that he's Jehovah Nisi, our banner, that he's Jehovah Shalom, our peace, that he's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And then submit your situation. Now, when I say situation, it does not always have to be a negative thing. It does not always have to be that you're facing a problem. It could be that you're facing a promotion. It could be that you're thinking about buying something. It does not always have to be something negative. But whatever the situation is, negative or positive or in between, let go and let God submit it to Him. Trust Him. Let go and let God. And don't go back and take it up. Beloved, I pray this message has been a blessing to you today. Thank you so much for connecting with me here. I'm going to pray over you, and then we are going to close out for today. Father, I thank you that you are such an awesome God. I thank you that you are the all-powerful. I thank you that you are the all-knowing. I thank you that you are the almighty. Oh, Holy Spirit, descend upon my brother and my sister watching and empower them to know who you are, to see who you are, to partner with you, and to let go to just let go and submit their situation to you today, trusting and knowing that you are there, that they're not alone because they have you and you will come through for them. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen, beloved. Once more, thanks for connecting with me here today. Your Father in heaven loves you and I will see you again next time. Bye for now. Oh.